Welcome to another Terranscape's Building by the Book. Today we're going to be taking a look at Capturing Clairvaux, The Final Hours by Claude, Claude Yoakum. So here we're taking a look at Capturing Clairvaux, The Final Hours by Claude Yoakum and it was produced in 2013 and is 144 pages long. I had to look at my notes. There is no table of contents in this book because it is really a journal. I kept saying blog in the last video. It's not a blog. It's more like a journal of his journey through creating this elaborate uh, town diorama that is set in World War II during a particular um, uh, time period within the war. And there is, this is the second part of a two-part book set. And the first book covers primarily building the castle. And the second part covers building the rest of the town. Uh, I did a review of the first book. It's in my uh, Building by the Books playlist, so you can go check it out there. So taking a look at the book um, in terms of the normal uh, things that we examine, we can take a look at the quality of techniques that he uses. Let me just see if I got the right tab here. Um, and taking a look at this page, I think you can get an immediate sense of the kinds of detail that he is providing uh, in the sense of the, uh, the achievements of the techniques that he's using. And one of the things that I really liked about this, not only do we see some of the plant matter and some of the stonework here, but we also get to see um, this, this wonderful railing. Now, I don't know. I'm going to point out things that are impressive to me. And you may be wondering how he did the stonework on the walls and, and all of that. But I've never seen wonderfully twisted uh, you know, iron work on a railing like this before. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, detail and it's a good representation of the kinds of small details that he has worked out. Uh, let's take a look at another photo here. There we go. So we can see on these two pages he's showing a lot of his finished work for different sections of the uh, town, you know, whether it's his shingling or you know the rock wall and, and some of these features. Uh, but we can also see this absolutely wonderful bombed out building and all of the intricate details that he put into this, um, you know, of course, from all of the, the timber rubble and, and whatnot, but even here, and he does talk about this, you can see right here, there's a little bed frame that's fallen out of one of the rooms, and he's got, you know, different kinds of debris in certain areas, and uh, just an amazing level of detail of work for every component of the town, and let me just say, there's a lot of town that uh, he detailed. Uh, let's take a look. So in terms of um, the variety of materials, you can get a sense here of how he is working on this river section. So he's using um, foam to uh, create the superstructure of it. He talks a little bit about using um, clay for the rock wall the rock wall adjacent to the river here. Uh, you can see some of the detailing here. He's talking about how he finished some of the stonework. Uh, let's take a look at, this is an interesting page here. Um, how did I, all right, well, you, you'll follow me. At least they're tabbed, right? Can we just say that? That's got some value to it, right? Uh, okay, yeah, this is what I wanted. Now here's another, uh, in terms of variety, right? Here's another technique that you rarely see is um, he's used brass etch work. Now what makes this distinctive is he had his own brass etchings made. So this isn't like a store-bought set that he just co-opted. He actually uh, designed these on uh, uh, his computer, uh, you know, using not so complicated software, I can't remember, maybe Photoshop. And then he sent it off to an etching house who made his brass etchings for him and they're just wonderful and it shows how he's um, taking a outside of the box approach and here's the final um, etch work on one of the balconies above the doorway here absolutely fantastic uh, details that he's added and showing how not only can you use brass etch work but don't be limited by the brass etch work that is already available photo etch i should say it's really photo etching and when we talk about the clarity of the techniques that he shows, 
uh, we can go back to, okay, so much for putting tabs in. I don't know. I'll work on that too. Well, we can start here. All right. So again, it's hard not to, to ogle some of the work that he's done here. So just to take a look at the scene first, and this is very much how he formats all of these different aspects. He shows you the finished piece. Here it's a, uh, a truck that has, let's get that on the close cam because it's so juicy to look at. <laughs> so here he's got a truck and the truck has um, had a branch that had broken off the tree and fallen and crumpled the canopy and the roof. Um, he's showing it in his sort of diorama style of, you know, the troops and, and here's the branch from another angle. And this is just a fantastic little, look at that. Uh, there we go. Look at that. That's wonderful work. Oh, love it. It's so um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Dynamic. It feels very narrative. And uh, that is a very important part for uh, this project for him. But he also goes through and does show you um, how he changed this kit. This is a model kit that he purchased, but he replaced some of the canopy supports. He made a new canopy for it. He discusses how he uh, pressed the branch into the truck to make it look crumpled like that. Um, so he is giving better than the first book. I want to be clear about that. Better step-by-steps for many of the areas of work that he did. Uh, let's take a look at another one here. Uh, hey, look at that. I got there faster. Okay. Now, of course, you remember in the first book, um, if you've seen that video, me talking about all the shingle work that he did. And again here, he's showing you um, that he wanted to do something a little bit different than uh, the previous shingle work that he had done. So he's showing you how he cut new shingle work to make this new pattern, how he laid that out. He often, uh, often discusses why he's chosen those things, which is part of the, the journal narrative that this book features. And then of course, he's showing you um, some of the finished work after he's weathered it and um, you know how he achieved some of that weathering um, using different techniques. And even though this isn't the exact same roof, you get a sense of uh, the general weathering that he's doing on all of the roof work. Uh, let's take a look at just one more. Oh, oh, okay. So let's come back real quick to the river. Oh, now I understand. That's all right. <laughs> so here we were talking about the steps in, that he took to create the river in terms of some of the materials, but it continues on to the other page and he's showing you how he's put the foliage in and painted it. And um, he also, uh, which is not, uh, I'm not going to show you, but he discusses all the modifications he had to make to the layout to accommodate the elements that he wanted, even though he's trying to do the town to scale, which I think is its own technique in a lot of ways, right? How do we modify things to fit our vision? And here he's showing an actual river from that area. It is the river he's modeling. And um, here he shows a little bit more of the continuation of that process. So a lot more um, step by steps on how he's achieving these techniques in a way that I think is, um, is easy to follow and uh, shows a lot of the important details in, in a very clear way. For photos, um, we can see, doo -doo -doo. let's see here. Let's take a quick look. Aha. Now here is the photo of that river finished with the building in the background that he's finished. And it's a great shot to show you all that work. What, what does it end up result like, uh, resulting looking, <laughs> what does the resulting finishing? Oh my gosh. I'm not going to edit that out. Let me try that again. He shows you what the resulting product after all those techniques looks like. And it's a great shot to kind of give you the inspiration of, of following those steps to achieve something like this. Uh, let's take a look at well, a couple more here. Um, um, we see his roof work on this side, but he also takes time to show some of these uh, photos where the roof work is incorporated. Now it's not the focus of this shot per se, but what he's been doing all of these parts leading up to this point is talking about all the elements that went into this scene, right? Including um, this brickwork. And here he talks about how he's made the, if I can keep it in frame, there we go. The uh, railing work, right? Using a drill and, and um, brass uh, uh, rods, I believe. Um, here he's talking about how he made the shingles. And so um, a lot of detail 
that is relevant to the, the finished product, but also taking the time to show the finished work in a variety of angles in a very, uh, very attractive way. And I want to show you one more before we leave this topic. Okay. And so um, here, let's just start right here. Okay. Sometimes he does it this way, which I think is very effective. Here he shows you the uh, finished bridge. All right. This is what he's aiming for. And then, much like other the, uh, many areas in the other book, and this is continued thematically throughout this one, he then goes back and says, here's the real bridge. Here are the photos of it. If I can find them from the time period, that's what I'm using. You can see, look at this old photo that he dug up so that he could get a sense of what these look like, these uh, uh, pylons on the bridge, uh, and then has taken the time to model them and shown you in a really, really nice way what's that finished pylon look like. And then also, of course, um, goes through all of the steps that he took to model that pylon. So it's a, such a comprehensive project in terms of um, showing you the research, showing the originals, showing the finished model, and showing you, you know, most, uh, maybe all of the relevant steps in terms of how he constructed this. Much more detailed than the first book. Really, really nice. Lastly, um, we just want to give him a little extra credit here. So the reference pictures, of course, when I say that, I'm looking for things that are the actual examples. Uh, and here, I mean, this book is full of them. I'm only going to show you a couple real quick. So, of course, the bridge, which we just discussed. This is wonderful. Here, he wanted to model this section of town. And um, I don't think it shows in this picture. So he wanted to get a photo of this bike shop and in frame. There we go. And he wanted to model this bike shop and like this was one of the only pictures that he could find of it. So he had to uh, embellish, you know, his, uh, you know, the, the details of the building because he was lacking in some of them. Um, and here's the finished bike shop that he created. So, oh, extra credit all over the place for this guy because he really did his homework. And it, I don't know how else you can call it that, except that he did a lot of homework on this project to really, really capture uh, this town in as much detail uh, that he could possibly do. And um, here, as one last look, here's a villa that he uh, wanted to model. Um, what are the key concepts that he wanted to integrate? And um, here is the finished model. And you can just see all of the detail that he captured in it. And you know, of course, really did a nice job of representing uh, these elements in his final work. So that gives you a look at capturing Clairvaux, the final hour by Claude Yoakum. And uh, let's go uh, back to the, the uh, stool and let me gush about this book just a little bit more. So uh, having taken a look at capturing Clairvaux, the final hours, what do I think about it as a final thought? Um, first, the target audience uh, is really anybody who's interested in miniature work. Um, World War II buffs, I think, will find something interesting in here. Dioramas are going to find something interesting. I think there's a lot of content directly applicable to a wide variety of terrain projects. And I think even if you're into uh, dollhouses and miniatures like that, you're going to find a lot that's offered in that book. So big, big audience for uh, skill level. I would say it is not a beginner's book. So uh, let, let's put it in the medium to advanced, but that's not right. I, I'd say any skill level because particularly if you combine it with his first book, you're seeing somebody who really is coming into it without a lot of technical skill, who's learning along the way. That's part of the joy of the journal format. And so if you're a beginner and you're looking to expand, uh, I think it has something to offer for you. So, but if you, you know, if you expect to get the final results that he's showing quickly and easily, um, and you're a beginner, you know, it will take some practice, which is what he did. For grading this, uh, I would give for the quality of the technique shown in A, outstanding level of detail and, uh, and just detail scattered all across the project. Uh, so that's an easy A. Uh, for the variety of materials and techniques shown, a staggering amount of different things are brought into play in this project. That's an easy A. For the clarity of the descriptions of how these things were done, I'm giving it a B and only for two small reasons. One is that some of the 
things that he's doing in here, he references from the first book on how, you know, uh, this is how I, after learning in, in the first book, basically, this is, then I used it here, right? So he's referencing some things from the first book. And um, there are a few, you know, small spots that don't necessarily show clearly all of the steps that are involved. But this is being nitpicky. For the most part, it's a solid description all the way through. But I'm gonna give it a B for the clarity. For the photos, uh, I'm giving it an A because all the photos uh, of the work in progress and the finished pieces and uh, the you know steps along the way, they're really all there. Uh, it'd be hard for me to give it less than an A on that. And so um, for the extra credit, I'm giving it a full bump like I did on his first book. A staggering amount of research is shown, photos, where I got them, how I used them, when information was missing, here's how I filled in the gaps. It's stunning, it's stunning. That's all I can say about it. Um, and uh, that gives me an overall grade of an A plus because I have a hard time finding fault with this book. It's uh, a big improvement over his first book. Uh, when you read this book, uh, what, what I took away from it is the, the first installment, which is, there is a, uh, it's in the playlist, it's Capturing Clairvaux, um, A Modeler's Tale, I believe. Uh, and that book was sort of like, I've been doing this awesome project, maybe I should do a book about it. Here's kind of, all right, I'm gonna pull this all together and uh, you know make it all into a book, and it feels like, it wasn't planned for and then happened. And then this book is, all right, I got my feet under me now on this and I wanna finish this project and follow along with it while I'm making the book. And so it's much more polished, lots of more detail, uh, lots of, lots of more? Lots of more detail is included uh, and it just, it feels so much more focused and it's so much tighter in its production. So um, it's an incredible improvement over his first book and I loved his first book. So there you go on that. Um, and I just want to mention, I was contacted by Mr. Yoakum and I asked him if my pronunciation, was, <laughs> my pronunciation, which I can't pronounce, was correct. And he said, uh, eh, close enough. Right. So. Thank you for being forgiving, Mr. Yoakum. And, um, and he also corrected that he's not from France. He's from Denmark. I should have looked before I shot this video, I think. So uh, error on my part there. Didn't do my research. Obviously, didn't recheck my homework on this, but I'm not going to look right now. Um, but when he contacted me, he mentioned that he only has 25 copies left as of that email, which was a few days ago for his first book, A Modeler's Tale. He has many, many more of, of the final hour in his hands, but only 25 of The Modeler's Tale. And to me, these are sister, sister you know, companion books, and I can't think of having one without the other. Um, I bought them as a pair right off the bat, and um, I really recommend you do so if you're interested. Uh, 25 copies. That's going to go fast. So get over to his website. I'll put a link down below how to get there and snatch them up. Uh, seriously, I this is one of the most valuable books on my bookshelf since I've been collecting terrain books. I have now probably like 15 or 20 different volumes. And um, this is the most solid in terms of the diversity of work, the enjoyment to read it, the quality of techniques The it's just it's a complete package. So I can't praise it enough. Um, there you go. So um, just before I wrap up though, I just wanna mention, if you like these videos, maybe you consider becoming a patron. Um, it's, a, it's a big help and I don't have any ads on my channel, so I don't get any revenue for these. I do them because I love to do them and I love contributing to the community. And uh, if you felt like maybe um, that you love them as much as I love producing them, maybe you consider supporting them with a very, very small contribution, you know, even a hundred cents a month, hundred pennies. So, you know, what, what is that? It's nothing. So it makes a big difference for me though. So thank you once again for joining me. I do appreciate it, especially if you're new to the channel or new to this series. Thank you so much for uh, coming in and participating. Even if you just drop in for one video, it's nice to see if 
a, a, a new face, even though I can't see your face and that really actually doesn't make any sense. You get a sense of how I feel about you. Um, and if you're a longtime viewer of Terranscapes, then you know that um, I will be coming back soon with another Terranscapes video. Photos of it, you know, showing that finished work as well as step by steps uh, that me. That's not how to do the grading, Mike. That's not.